Welcome home and welcome to Spirit and Honey. Will you pray with me? Lord our God, our loving Father, we thank you for all that our hearts and spirits are allowed to receive from you. We thank you for the community you give us, strengthen us to face life even through toil, struggle, and privation. Grant that your powers flow out to give us strength and courage. May we see and recognize you in, our, in your deeds ever more clearly. Do not let us faint or grow weary, no matter what we have to suffer. Grant that your spirit may penetrate us more deeply to bring peace to us and those around us, and finally to bring blessing for all peoples of the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's words for today come from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 31 through 37. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 31 through 37. I will read it for us from the NRSV, the New Revised Standard Version. Hear the word of the Lord. Therefore I tell you, people will be forgiven for every sin and blasphemy, but blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you speak good things when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. The good person brings good things out of a good treasure, and the evil person brings out evil things out of the evil treasure. I tell you, on the day of judgment, you will have to give an account for every careless word you utter. For by your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, here we have Jesus speaking to the Pharisees concerning their actions and words. You know, prior to this passage, the Pharisees called out Jesus in his healing works. The Pharisees went as far as to say that Jesus was able to do these works because he has satanic powers. And at this lofty and untrue accusation, Jesus says these things to them in verse 31 through 32. Jesus says, Blasphemy and sin will be forgiven, but blasphemy against the Spirit will not. And that he says that you can speak against the Son of Man and be forgiven, but not the Spirit. You see, our passage today is aimed directly at the Pharisees. Because of the Pharisees, they have seen the works of God, Jesus. And it is that they are deliberately refusing to acknowledge the power of God. They've seen what God has done, and yet they refuse to acknowledge God. For in this case, rejection of it is not just a problem. But once having seen the glory and power of God, they still choose to reject what has happened here. To those in ancient times, sometimes they thought of blasphemy against son of man to be from an unbeliever, while blasphemy against the spirit was coming from a believer. The truth is, that is underlying here that we must understand, that we as the believers must be able to see the works of God and not be opposed to it. EMS, you will be surprised to see at times that Christians and believers are the ones who are opposed to the works of God. It's sometimes because we don't know, sometimes we lack, sometimes we just aren't spiritually awake to see how God is working. You know, that is why it's crucial for us to be open to the works of God, to be able to discern the works of God, to open our hearts to see and discern to see how God is working in our lives and other lives and in our communities. Jesus tells the Pharisees they are opposing the works of God. At the same time, Jesus is talking about their identity through the words they speak. The words that we speak says a lot about how we are on the inside, who we belong to, the world or Jesus Christ. Right. So therefore, the fruits that we bear from our words says a lot about who we are. Our words have power. You know, are we loving and raising up one another, or are or are our words leaving pains and not life giving? Our words should be life giving. Today, I leave us with this question, you know, through our words, are we contributing to the works of God's kingdom or are we opposing what he does through our words? EMS, you and I, we all represent the body of Christ. Our words matter. How we talk to our friends matters. The kind of words that we use matter. The kind of subjects, the topics we talk about with those around us really does matter. Because at the end of the day, not only do our words represent us, but they represent Jesus. If Jesus dwelled in us, if Jesus lived inside of us, if Jesus said, this, this person right, is who is my child, then our words should be Christ-like. So we must tell the world of Jesus through our love and words. So I pray that more and more and day by day and every day, we become to be more living, loving, come to give life through our words and may represent Jesus Christ through the words that we speak. Let's pray. 
Father, Father, be with us, be with our uh, speech and all that we say and the things that we talk about may we glorify you. Father, we admit that through our words, sometimes we oppose the works of your kingdom, but we ask that you would continue to guide us so that we may not uh, hurt others, but our li- conversation, that our words may be life-giving. Help our words to be Christ-like, help our conversations to be Christ-like. We thank you for loving us. In Jesus Christ, let me pray. Amen.